With this short video, we are going to be reviewing key performance indicators, and we're going to be using um, information and research from a case study from aerospace and manufacturing facility. But then we're also going to apply it to um, other industry with an example at the end. So if we look at um, key performance indicators (KPIs), according to Smith, two thousand and seven, he defined KPIs as a measure of success or compliance. Berry 2005 believed that KPIs through the definition and measurement of progress help organizations to achieve their goals and more 2004 also described the term KPIs as performance targets given to individuals or organizations indicating how performance will be measured and the target must adapt to meet the business situations. If we think about um, Hagen Moore 2004, who explained that feedback gained from the performance measurement results will be attended to simultaneously and the indicators are required to assess achievement. So with good KPIs as one of the performance measurement two companies or organizations can be confident with their manufacturing tools and machines implementation for achieving their goals and objectives. But the important thing here is that good KPIs must be clear and must be um, must have a specific um, aim in terms of knowing what you want to achieve so this can be applied to any industry any organization anywhere if we think about you know why you know, do organizations choose KPIs? Well, Walters and Bevan, 2005, explained that organizations adopted for KPIs in order to reduce development time scales and costs and also use its highly skilled people effectively. You know, uh, Bose, 2006, mentioned KPIs allow the organization to see what areas are executing well and what areas require improvement. Tony Etel, 1997, stated that the identification of appropriate KPIs, as well as aligning them with company strategies, can become key to realizing the bottom line impacts. And what we're saying here is that, you know, identifying what the key KPIs are in each department and ensuring that you meet these KPIs and efficiencies, processes and practices can actually lead to increased revenue or saving of costs impacting upon your bottom line regardless of what organizational industry you're operating in. Now if we look at KPI considerations well there are various indicators that you know according to Joyce and Woods 2001 that good performance indicators must consider um, and these included the long and short-term linkage to traditional measures of profitability, the return on capital employed and the earnings per share, the balance between financial and non-financial factors, the strategic aims which needs to be translated in, into critical success factors, and the efficiency and effectiveness concerning the ratio of outputs relative to inputs. And all of these factors link into your overall aims and objectives in terms of what you would want to achieve for your organization and obviously in the private sector you are trying to make a profit so it's going to impact upon your bottom line as we've stated before so if we think about the implementation of KPIs well you know with departments KPIs are now being aligned to the company's goals and objectives mission and the vision each department held their own business strategy, keeping with their subordinates to educate and deploy KPIs implementation to all levels of the organization within this research paper that we were looking at. So key performance indicators is one of the tools for evaluating performance measurements. KPIs allow a company to see what area it is executing well and what area actually requires improvement. What area KPIs selected must reflect the organizational goal and you know must be key to success and they must be quantifiable according to um, Bose uh, 2006. If we think again you know about the implementation before good KPIs can be developed the knowledge of KPIs 
you know, must be trained to the company's top management, who are the people responsible for planning and organizing the company's strategies in terms of the mission, the visions, the aims, objectives, what they want to achieve. You know, once the top management is familiar with the KPI concepts, then only they are able to utilize the company's financial and operational information to link to the mission, vision, objectives and the goals to develop the company's KPIs and to have it coming from top down rather than from bottom up to establish it as part of what must be achieved and what is expected within each department and, and the reasons behind it as well and how this will link to the mission, vision, aims and objectives of the company and how this will impact upon the bottom line of your organisation. So if we think about the um, above diagram in terms of KPIs, you obviously have a start um, point and you then move on to take into consideration the views and the KPIs from internal and external stakeholders. And here you would then develop your outcomes in terms of what you want to achieve if it's your external outcomes stakeholders they could be shareholders and they might want a return on their dividends otherwise why are they investing their money in your company apart from the possibility of your share price increasing and then this could lead to the development of key performance indicators KPIs and then you develop your objectives and then you have you know development um, of projects development of activities and you know uh, and looking how you can change processes to make them more efficient and more effective and then these all lead to your you know measurement and the results and then this leads back to your regularly regular review to find out how well you're doing if you're doing well if you're meeting target if so what can be improved how far can you increase things if not why you're not and what needs to happen in order to get to where you want to get to so you know this is a continuous process that keeps on going until you get to where you want to get to and having continuous improvement If we look at an example, um, you know, as a course manager for a London college and teaching Pearsons at levels four, five and six, you know, I was the course manager and I can tell you that at level five, we had a key performance indicator, which was a 75% pass rate at level five and level six, but if we just take level five. If we take the average class was 20 students and we had a 75 percent pass rate so we wanted at least 15 students per, per class and in each class you would have 10 classes in it in a cohort in in a term so for each class you'd have 20 students so you would expect 15 students to pass and if each student was paying 9,300 to the college and that represented um, a, a total revenue of one thousand and thirty nine one hundred and thirty nine thousand pounds which students would progress on to um, level six from level five and so every five percent less or above seventy five percent was equivalent to plus or minus nine thousand three hundred so why was this um, key performance indicator important well it was important because the government's targets set a pass rate at level 5 and 6 continuation uh, of 75% and if colleges and universities were not achieving this then the government has the right um, if no changes are made within a college and university and they are underperforming they have the right to remove the student finance and without the student finance and the funding then students a uh, vast majority of them wouldn't be able to come to colleges or universities so having this taken away would have a devastating effect on the college so it's imperative that this key performance indicator was met So if we think about the key performance indicator, it was clear, it was concise and it linked to the bottom line of the college and as a consequence we provided additional support via mentors for students, we provided feedback within 48 hours on progression on assignments, we provided in-class assistance on assignments, provided suggested outlines and examples of previous papers, we supported the students with extensions and deferrals we undertook staff training with a focus on student support 
we developed a student tracking system for all students to know exactly where every single student was at any one time and, and what units they had passed what assignments was it assignment one assignment two they had passed or not and so on and so forth and so we could track and see what students needed help where with which, with which units and with which assignments and we developed better communication for students with um, outstanding work to complete So the results of this was that we, you know, after one year of putting all these additional support packages and changes and processes and, and staff training in, into practice, we had a, 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 were attaining per class a 90% pass rate, which basically on a class of 20 was an additional uh, 27,900 per class uh, of uh, 20 students. Uh, moving up to level six so if we had that that's for one class so we had 10 classes of 20 students and were achieving 90 percent that meant an additional revenue students progressing onto level six of 270,900 um, pounds per cohort intake so we were definitely meeting the um, profitability targets of the college we were you know, ensuring that the college had greater revenues uh, of flow for um, their bank statements and also, and, more, and most importantly, um, the government targets were met um, and continued student finance and funding was, was uh, continued as well as better student satisfaction, um, better engagement and better morale and um, all around a happier environment meeting all the aims and objectives. So we can see how this one KPI has kind of like solidified everything and made changes in order to achieve um, the overall company's aims and objectives.